Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm so excited for today's episode. After we reviewed the Essentials website, Jose Zaniga has agreed to come on the show. He's the YouTuber behind Teaching Men's Fashion and the founder of Essentials. I can't wait to pick his brain about growing a YouTube channel to 5.8 million subscribers, but also how to leverage those subscribers to create a really successful e-commerce brand. Let's jump into it. Hey brother, thanks so much for coming on the show. Hey yo, thank you for having me, man. This is, this is an honor. Yo, I've been seeing you pop off lately, dude. And I've been up to date to every single video. Like, you are legit helping so many dudes out right now. Uh, means a lot coming from you, man. I'll give some context. So, I think it was four years ago, I hadn't even done an e-commerce sale. And I was looking into influencers that can market products. I was like, oh, how do I sell this? And I started watching yeah. your videos and you had so many subscribers then. And it's just like, it feels like a lifetime ago and it's still, um, you're still absolutely killing it. It's a abs absolutely amazing mm -hmm. story, man. Small world, talk about that. Like, what, so when I first reached out to you, I had no idea that we had worked in the past, you know, through other like streams or other people, other connections. But uh, I mean, this guy's a G, he's been working with so many big companies. and. Like you said, four years ago, I was I was starting to pop off. I had like whatever two, three hundred thousand subscribers at the time, and uh, we were working with a specific company that you were working with. And now, four years later, we connect again, just completely random, small world. Like it, it is really a small world. Yeah, I didn't think we we ever chatted or or had any connection, but it was because I wasn't in the influencer department. But I did know that they were working with you and you were kind of their top influencer in terms of codes. And I was like, how do I do this? I was still trying to figure out e-commerce and now, and now we're here. So it's a, it's a crazy story how it all just kind of linked up like that. Um, I'd, love to, I'd love to jump in and maybe if you can just, just tell us a bit of your history and, and a little bit more about yourself. Yeah, uh, so started out as an influencer, like you said, uh, that, that was the biggest thing. I started when I was, I think I was like 16, 17 that I started like posting videos online. And it, was, it really was never supposed to be a career or anything like that. It was just for fun. Like I really liked the idea of dressing or trying to better yourself. Um, it was around that 2016, 2017 area that I started like lifting off. And I'm like, yo, like, this could be a career. Just, being, just posting videos that you like to do already. Um, at that time, you know, we started scaling. And what we noticed is that through the help of brands, like what, what, what some brands don't realize is that they actually when they sponsor your content they're actually helping you scale too because now you can like quit your job you can start hiring editors you can start doing things that you need to do to really start pumping out more and better content right um so when i started realizing this we went just full throttle i remember i quit my job i was around like 19 20 at the time i quit my job i go full throttle on videos and it was just it paid off like the return was like instant and you could just see the subscriber growth growing up and then we started hitting like a peak around like 2018 i think it was um, where we're like, all right, kind of like what you said, we were working with a lot of big brands, like, and, and we're talking like bigger brands at this point, right? Like these big, like established brands. And in our heads, we were like, man, if we're providing them this much value, they're paying us X amount every single month. What could we do if we did it for ourselves? You know? Um, and that's when we started to kind of like pivot and like, instead of creating like merch brands that a lot of influencers do, can we create independent brands that I will work as an influencer for to pump them up and then whatever revenue they make, we continue to hire other influencers for. And uh, so we kind of really went down that rabbit hole, started creating a bunch of brands. We currently own four and are part owner of one. Um, and yeah, it, it's just been scaling since then, you know? That's amazing, man. It's such a, such a great way to go about um, e-commerce because you're owning your own channels, you know, well, constantly battling Facebook CPMs and all of that. And you've just got this solidified community that you can always rely on and grow. So um, it's, it's very impressive. And I think one of the main takeaways that I get from your story is, you know, you started when you were 16 and you're still going. And it's just like, things just take time to build. Um, and, and, you know, it, I, there's so, there'd be so many YouTubers out there that start, they have everything that it takes and they do one year at 16 and then they give up. But it's just like, you gotta keep, keep going, hey. Yeah, and even now we're not even, and I'm sure you feel the same way too. You're 26, right? 26, 27? Yeah, 26. Same, same age. I'm 26. Um, you never feel like you're there, right? You always feel like you're battling problems. And like, I still feel like I don't know enough. It's been 10 years. And I feel like there's so much more to learn, to, to, to do, to fix. It never stops. It's, it's, a, it's a never ending process. And uh, like you said, too many people quit, quit early because they, they want that fast success or that fast 
uh, dopamine effect of having cash or, or growth or whatever it is really, really quick, you know? So true. So um, put yourself in a 16 year old shoes and they're just starting now. How would they grow their YouTube and their community? Um, I, I just think it hasn't changed. It, too, for me, it's always been two things. Just an immense amount of value. That's the first thing, right? Like it, I, I almost, I always see videos as, as, as creating a product, right? Because some people don't correlate creating videos into a business, but like it's really a product where the product that you're creating is the video, right? And the currency you're getting back is people's time. And time is the most valuable currency. Therefore, the product that you have to create needs to be incredible, right? So immense amounts of value, right? Like you can't, it can't be ego stroking or something that took you really quickly to, to just copy paste, throw it on, right? So immense amounts of value and then just tons of content. Like you have to f overflow it with content. For example, with me, my type of content is very evergreen, right? It's stuff that works today, works two years from now, and it'll still be relevant three years from now. So the lifetime value of my content is very long. Um, therefore, the more I can pump out, the more organically I'll start appearing in search engine results, right? Because a lot of my stuff is how to date a girl, how to dress better, how to get a six pack. It's standard stuff that guys will continually be asking for five years from now. So the, the way that I win, continually just pump. I mean, I think I'm sitting at 1,600, seven, almost 2,000 videos. Every week I'm pumping out seven videos on the English channel. We have a Spanish channel that uh, has about three, almost three, 2.6 million, seven videos on the Spanish channel as well. So like this is constantly, uh, and this has been going on since 2017. We've never dropped the ball. Like it's never stopped. And you can see that evidently through your channel. Like I was telling you originally, like I genuinely stumbled upon your channel because it had immense amounts of value. And I have watched every single video because I walk away with something, you know? Yeah, definitely. We're nearing 100,000 um, subscribers after, after four months and it, it is exactly the same. You know, we just kind of went into it and we went, okay, let's just give everything, like ab or as much value as possible. And then let's focus on SEO and then let's just let YouTube do the rest. Let's, it will just pop up everywhere. And it's worked, worked quite well. And, you know, all of our other channels have gone as well. You know, YouTube is the, just that core driver. We're going to do probably an episode for the uh, 100,000 subs subscribers and probably just kind of go into all of this in, in more detail. That's why I was, I was so excited to do this episode today. Um, maybe if Please. you could um, just, maybe if you can just touch on those four brands that you're running. Um, and I would love to hear just yeah. a little bit more about them and, and you know, what are some challenges that you had to overcome to, to build those with your personal brand? Yeah, so, um, so the four brands are, we got Essentials, that's our biggest one. Uh, we have He Grooming, which is like, a, like just the name says, products for men for grooming. Uh, we have Santa Lucia, which is a, a fragrance brand, and then we have Jade Black, which is a sunglass brand. So it goes Essentials, Jade Black, and then the other two, because the other two we just started this year uh, when it comes to size, right? The biggest issue when it came to scaling brands, and this is why we reached out to you guys, it was uh, getting outside, especially the influencer niche. Um, I felt like we were very bottlenecked in our industry. And uh, for whatever reason, I kept being the high, I mean, and, and that part made sense. We always knew that I was gonna be the highest performance influencer because it is my brand. So it was always going to overperform every time I promoted my own brand. Um, but the biggest challenge for us to overcome that we've been working on for three, four years was, all right, how do we disconnect this brand fully from my image? So it could be a living, breathing organism on itself. And thankfully we've, we're getting really close. I think we're like at a 65, 35 split where a lot of this, 35% of the sales are coming that are not from me, that we can account for, right? So it's getting close, but I'd love for that number to be much, much greater, right? Where it could, I could literally just go away and it would still function fully. Um, and that's something that we're continually working on. Now, one of the ways that we, we really are working on it is, is uh, going into the women's section, right? So I know my audience is heavily male. I think I'm like at a 95-5 split because obviously all my content is to help men. Um, so the first thing we did was, all right, so let's start creating products for women and let's start finding other influencers that are women that could be moving that product that I know will not be myself. So a huge part of that is, was because of that effect. Um, and then our next step now is, all right, let's figure out paid advertisement. That's not influencer marketing. Let's figure out how to move that type of, that type of uh, uh, stream. 
So that, that's pretty much been the biggest hurdle to overcome and talking to a lot of other influencers, that's the one where they almost always get stuck and what they end up doing is just, they just turn it into a merch brand, right? Like it just becomes so much easier to sell your product and leave it as if it's your own product. That makes sense. Well, I guess it's like a whole new skill set to learn. You've got your core competency, which is your content, your product. Um, that you're putting out there and then you've got you know a whole new skill set you know digital marketing is just so unorthodox and it's so so hard to learn it's not not the same as organic social which um, makes a lot of sense there's a lot of hurdles to jump there it, it, it you like you said it is completely different uh, we're working a lot on that now uh, where we're and, and, and it becomes harder when it's different and you know this because you have a bunch of companies but creating content for all the companies for digital marketing purposes we, ha we need to have a whole team just to be able to continually pump out fresh content for that. But um, like you were saying, like it, it's such a different beast and it's so easy to get comfortable too, right? Because, because you're doing so well with just influencer and because you as an influencer can move enough product where the company is successful, that makes, it makes it hard for you not to get comfortable. Like, right, the company. And then another thing is that it also screws up your perceptions of profit margins where because I am the main promoter, my profit margins are so high, right? Versus battling CPM on Facebook that you're fighting for pennies or whatever, or drastically less conversion rates. Yeah, very hard to sell a product under $50 relying on Facebook and whatnot. And, um, yeah. So obviously I reviewed your product last week. I hope you didn't take any offense to it. I was trying to make it as, as constructive as possible, <laughs> but I'd love to talk about essentials a little bit more, you know, maybe what was your vision behind the brand and, um, you know, did it meet your expectations in terms of success? Yeah. So when we first started the brand, the, the idea was creating basic, basics for guys. And the first thing that we worked on was a t-shirt. We literally started, I remember it was, it was around 2018, we ordered a thousand pieces, which at that time, I think it was an investment of whatever, I don't even remember how much we spent, but the total revenue from that would have only been like 30 grand, right? Cause it was $30 a t-shirt. And at that time I was, I was sweating. I'm like, man, are we ever going to move this? Right? Uh, thankfully, you know, and it, and it was, this was just solely me. We kept pumping, 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 and we sold everything out in about two weeks. And I was like, it was like a euphoria. I'm like, yo, this is insane. Like in my head, this was like impossible to do. So immediately we reordered for 4,000 units, uh, sold that even faster, two days this time, right? So there goes 120,000 in revenue. Uh, we scaled again, this time it was about, it was gonna total like 650,000 in revenue. So this is our third order, just t-shirts at this point. Uh, same thing, this one even went faster. It was like a, a little bit less than a day. And then ever since then, we've been able to gradually increase our, our, uh, our inventory and we'll do about one to two million in sales on launch day. And then it starts obviously dwindling down. So Essentials is our biggest uh, mover and I'm definitely satisfied with its success because not many brands can move that much product in one single launch. Uh, however, I, I wanted to get to a point where, man, can we do half a million every day? or a million every day, like that should be possible, right? So what do we have to do to get to that point? Um, that's our current mindset at this point, and, and how do we get there? That, that is our current hurdle. Uh, so far, Essentials though, like we, we, we're definitely happy with, with its growth and, and, and how it's, it, it's currently functioning. We just wanna scale bigger, and that, that's when all the problems start coming. Yeah, amazing, man. I'd love to just jump back to the YouTube. I, I, I always love asking, you know, one of the main reasons why a lot of YouTubers don't get into it is they don't think that they can deal with the haters and, and all the, the negative negativity, which yeah. I'm sure you get a lot with the, the Teaching Men's Fashion channel. Um, maybe do you have a process of dealing with that or a mindset? Uh, honestly, like it, early on, you, you learn how to deal with it just because, and I, I don't know if you've, if you've had any of it, but people will start, will make fun of anything that they dislike if you said something or they'll start attacking your personality or how you look. Um, early on you deal with it and, and at this point, like it doesn't even, it doesn't even phase you. And when, it get, when you get to a certain size, like even as yourself right now at 100,000, you probably have so many comments that even like, you, you're not gonna notice every single one. It, it, it becomes impossible. Same thing with me, like I have, like I said, seven videos go out every week. Every video will, will get, let's say 500 comments. No way out of the 4,000 comments, I'm gonna notice 
a lot of them, especially if the minority of them are negative. Um, what, I do, what I do think is that if you do notice that there's an uptick in negativity, a lot of times it's not just haters and there's some truth to what they're saying. Because at the end of the day, think of it, because I, I think about my viewers as my customers, right? So think about your customers with, with, with Udi, right? If you start noticing an uptick in, in uh, customers giving you negative feedback, would you call that hate or would you call that like, there's probably truth to that, like we need to fix something. Um, that's really how, I, how I, I've always seen it. Like I remember back in the day, a lot of the hate that I would get would be like, man, you're so monotone. Man, this was boring. Man, this, this seemed long, right? They were, they were white, right? Like if you look at my early videos, I was very shy and quiet and you know, very uh, monotone. And while maybe the delivery is wrong, a lot of times there's, there's some truth to the hate. So I've never been really bothered by it. And I always try to take it from a, from a constructive point of view. Yeah, I think if there's absolutely no truth to it, you know, you're fat and you're lazy. It's just like, and you just know that it's just, it's just that, and then it just never, it hurts. But when there is some truth to it, you know, it forces that self-reflection. Uh, I guess my, yeah. my whole thing was, you know, I looked at it and I was like, okay, this probably would get under my skin, but I need to become the person where it doesn't affect me to be happy yeah. in my life. So I was just like, the only way I'm going to figure that out is if I just do it and, and see if I can yeah. deal with it. And, and figure it out. And honestly, if you're a dude, because like I told you, I used to be very shy. Uh, it's crazy that it was an adverse effect that I did not expect. But if you're a dude that, that, that is very shy or, or have you know problems with social anxiety or whatever, putting out YouTube videos is probably the quickest way to, to battle that. And like you quickly get over that. Because like it was almost instant or over the course of a year that I started changing and morphing. Like you said, you had to become the person that it just doesn't phase you. Like it, it really doesn't and you continue to do what you think is right. Look man, this has been incredible. I, I have a lot of respect for people that have grown e-commerce brands in a different way to me. You know, I, I've yeah. relied heavily on digital platforms. You've just built this amazing community over, you know, consistent uh, videos. So um, thank you so much for, for joining us. Um, what are, where, where can people find you and reach you? I'm sure that they're all probably following already, but where can they find yeah, you? Yeah, of course. Uh, obviously, uh, Teach You Men's Fashion is the best way on YouTube. Like I said, I'm active there every week, so you'll, you'll always keep up to date with me there or, or on Instagram, you know. But again, pleasure for, you know, thank you for having me. It's, it's, it's an honor, honestly. And like, uh, I'm always learning from this dude, man. This dude's a, this dude's a genius. Uh, so again, thank you for having me. So there you have it. I definitely was fangirling a little bit. He's an absolute legend. Let us know what you, you thought of this content style and we can do a ton more. Um, make sure you like and subscribe. Thanks for joining.